Hey there, so a lot of you guys have asked me how I got my first full-time job at DreamWorks Animation as a story artist. In this video, I'll talk about how I got the job and all the steps that I took to get this job. I'll also give some advice that'll hopefully help you in the future. Please remember that these are coming from my experiences alone and my point of view. In other words, what I'm about to say is not the only way to get a job as a story artist in an animation feature studio. So without further ado, let's get started. Earlier this year, I just turned in my badge for DreamWorks Feature Animation and left the studio. This isn't the first time I have left the studio, but it's the first time where I actively made the decision to move forward with my career. My time with the studio has been an adventure, being able to lend a hand for a few films and projects with some of the most chillest and talented people. It was an honor to be a part of some of the most beloved franchises. So for the video, I'd like to talk about how I got my first full-time job as a story artist here at DreamWorks. Back in spring 2014, DreamWorks Feature Animation announced that they were looking for about six story trainees for their story initiative program of 2014. By this time, I was already a fourth year student at CalArts, and I was already set on becoming a story artist as my main full-time position and discipline. DreamWorks asked for applicants to submit a story portfolio which would then be reviewed by the employees at the studio. During that semester, I worked on a draft for my story portfolio. While working on my story portfolio, I constantly checked in with my mentors and story people to see how I could improve the portfolio, getting feedback, removing work that was weak, and reorganizing them for presentation. I looked back at story artists I admired from DreamWorks at that time. One thing I can recommend is that when you're trying to get in a studio, be sure to research the body of work and the artists coming from that place so you get the feel of what fundamentals they look for in their artists. I sent my old story portfolio in, which I'll link in the description below. I sent my portfolio to the recruiters, and I was also told a lot of people were submitting, so I didn't really have a lot of high hopes for myself. I was still working on my fourth year short Tiny Nomad during all of this, and there was still a lot of work that needed to be done for the film. I got a phone call and an email from DreamWorks Animation saying that they liked my story portfolio and are considering giving me a story test for the trainee program. At the end of the call, I was like, awesome, nice, but at the same time, oh shit, because this was during crunch time for all of us at CalArts. We were all working on our own films. I had two other classmates who were on the same boat. They both got accepted for the story test trainee, but were also on their films. Luckily, I was a good place with mine, but I also needed to take a full week off from the film just to work on the test. So we all received the prompt for our test. I'm not going to tell you what the prompt is due to confidentiality, but I can talk about my test in general. So with the prompt handed out, I had to actually make up the story, plot, the characters, the sequence, and everything else for the test. This was tough because it's like coming up with another short film idea while we were working on our own short films. So when I was working on my test, I was thinking about how I could put myself out there as a capable story artist. The test was all about taking initiative, so I needed to be bold on my direction for the boards. I thought about DreamWorks, the story artists they have, and my sensibilities altogether. I wanted to make something more cinematic, meaning I'm conscious about my shot choices that serve the story. Animation is all about character, so I wanted to have heavy character acting. I wanted my drawings to be clear and loose, so I didn't spend too much time on making a drawing look super finished or super detailed. Luckily, we got to do any genre we wanted. If drama, make them cry. If comedy, bring the house down. I chose to do an action adventure with a slice of comedy because that was around the same tone as Tiny Nomad, and I needed to do something I was strong at due to the doom of film crunch time looming around. I'm not the best at drama or comedy, but because I come from an animation mindset, I'm going to work with my strengths, which is more on character performances. Again, I wanted my storyboards to be cinematic because my strengths are clearly not writing and dialogue, and wanted the story to be pantomime with just a bit of dialogue. My story had ninjas, and it was set in feudal Japan. Eventually, it ended up being about two ninja brothers who kidnap an emperor's daughter. One of the brothers gets injured, so the younger one has to finish the mission. I looked at Hokusai paintings to see if I could utilize some of that imagery in film language, since animation allows us to take advantage of those things. And that's a mindset that's needed from story artists. You need to think outside the box in how you present your story, and how you can take those outside inspirations and influences into your storyboards. I did my entire first pass in thumbnail mode with quick scribbly drawings. I also sent those in as part of my test to show the studio and the story artists there and what my thoughts process was. 
So after I submitted the test, I continued to work on Tiny Nomad. Two of my other classmates already got their interviews earlier on, and they were already getting accepted for the story trainee program. I was still waiting by this time, but I was already slowly accepting that I didn't get it. Later during that semester, I get a phone call from DreamWorks Animation saying they wanted me in for a personal interview. So I come into the studio and I'm greeted by the team. That's where I met Red Seacrest and some of the recruiters at DreamWorks Animation. It was a super casual conversation we had, and it's comforting to know how down-to-earth they were over there. I talked about my love for films and animation, and that the movie The Prince of Egypt was probably my biggest inspiration into getting into animation. And also, The Prince of Egypt was a huge hit over at the Philippines when I was living there for a while, with Sunday schoolers going there as field trips just to see that movie. So I head back to CalArts and all of us, we finish our student films. I get news from CalArts later on, saying that Tiny Nomad, along with other great films that year got into the producer show for CalArts. During that day of the producer show, I got a call saying I was one of the selected to be part of the story trainee program. So that was a very memorable night for me. And ever since 2014, I've been a story artist for both feature and TV. Between then and now, I left the studio numerous times to work on several different projects, being a story artist and a hand-drawn animator. So there you have it, that's how I got my first foot in the door. It's nice to look back on the steps I took to work on a story portfolio, and it makes me more reflective to see where I was and how I am now. DreamWorks is an amazing place to work in, and I had a great experience. I learned so much from my coworkers over there, and learned a lot about the medium and the industry. There is a lot of passionate folks at DreamWorks Animation. It was very close to where I lived, I was paid well and I didn't feel like I had to grind all the time. It was not an easy decision to make because DreamWorks Animation offered security and comfort. However, I chose to leave because there were parts of me that needed to grow and pursuing other things will allow those parts of me to actively grow. And there's a lot I want to say with this medium of animation. I have yet to announce those projects soon, but I'll keep you guys posted for that. A part of me feels like this won't be the last time I'll be working with DreamWorks and Maybe in the future, I'll work with them again. So thanks for hearing me out, and hopefully I can announce those projects soon in the future. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.